great search online and I believe we have a lead or two on where this M cave may be. So what we're going to do is we're going to hike out there about 10 miles from here into those mountains and we're going to go into the same canyon that Kenny once was in looking for this M cave. We may find something, we may find nothing, but you're going to be along with us for the ride. Now out here at the Desert National Wildlife Refuge, you can see that it's not just open land, it's a wildlife preserve. So unfortunately, drones are prohibited and all vehicles must be street legal. So off-highway vehicles are not permitted out here off these designated roads. You can't have trucks, dirt bikes, but they've got to be street legal and they've got to be on established roads, which means if you want to go off-road, it's got to be on foot. I want to take a quick second and talk about our gear. Um, I do carry a ham radio, it requires an FCC license, which I have, but it's really great for keeping in contact out here when you're in the middle of the desert. I do carry the Camelback with the biggest uh, water bladder available. This is the, uh, I believe it's the three liter water bladder, so that's always full before I head out. I've got a tool bag, and in the tool bag I have a Leatherman, um, gloves, dust mask, flashlight, and a, uh, an extra knife, which is the CKRT, very nice, small, easy to carry, but that's just a backup. My actual knife that I carry is a, um, is a K bar, and it's great, it's very comfortable, and it is, uh, the blade's less than three inches, which of course is a Nevada regulation. Go figure, you can carry a firearm unconcealed, but uh, anything over three inches is a felony, as far as knives go. I like this Camelback bag because not only does it carry, I believe it's a, uh, a three liter water bladder, but it carries a, a, quite a bit of gear as well. So extra sunscreen, that's a must out here. I've already put it on, um, so that shouldn't be necessary. Uh, freeze dried food binoculars in there. I'm not going to take them out, but I've spoke about them on a previous video. They're Steiner. They're great quality binoculars. Extra water, generally for the uh, freeze-dried food. Tourniquet, uh, power bar. I have an extensive first aid kit, so you can never have everything you need, but it's got quite a bit of stuff here. I've got a survival kit. I'm not gonna go through everything that's in there, but you can freeze the video and take a look at the list that I have. These Mag Magpul uh, docket pouches are fantastic. They're extremely durable. I really like the clear window one because you can put like a list of items of what's inside here so you know what's in there. And uh, it's really great, just a little pocket survival kit for the desert. Last but not least, one of the most important things that I have is a firearm. Smith & Wesson J-Frame 357 Magnum, 5-shot. When I don't need it, it just sits on my belt. I have a very comfortable holster for it. And um, it's better to have and not need it than need it and not have it. Out here, the biggest predator that we'd be dealing with is a mountain lion, possibly coyote. And they generally shy away from people. But then again, there is the uh, phantom footsteps reported by several other YouTubers, so who knows. Now you can see that I am alone out here, 100% by myself. There's no camera crew, no friends, no family, nothing. Just myself, all alone, and of course you're here as well. Now out there about 30 miles is Las Vegas. So it's quite a hike if we were to have to hike out there. Now if you can see that clump of, uh, I don't know, kind of populated area out there in that long line, that's the highway. And it's a lot farther than it looks. So you could walk it in an emergency, but it's quite a ways. Now out here, there is a cell signal most of the time we do have a cell signal. My phone is being tracked. So if something were to happen and I got stuck out here, somebody would be able to trace my phone out here, providing I'm not in a pocket where there's no cell service. Now for this video, I made a change to the microphone. So GoPro Hero 9 Black with a media mod. Hopefully you can hear me a little bit better than you have in the past videos. Uh, without further ado, let's head out into that mountain range. And just beyond that set of mountains is a valley 
and somewhere in that valley just might be the M cave that Kenny Beach spoke of. So let's go. Oh, that might not be ideal to get down. Let's head down over here. Now I've received a lot of feedback uh, through the comments on my videos that this is just a hike. And yeah, it is just a hike, but it's a high stakes hike. Again, I'm out here quite a ways from civilization. I mean, the nearest uh, business gas station is probably 20 minutes from here, 20 miles or so. There's nobody around as far as the eye could see. So if something were to happen to me, I'm gonna be a long ways away from everybody. I've taken a lot of precautions in case anything does happen, but you can never really be 100% safe out here. So you've gotta be careful, you've gotta know what you're doing, you've gotta be prepared for the unexpected, which hopefully I have been. So I've got just after 8 a.m. Saturday, May 7th, 2022, Weather's about 80 degrees with the wind, so with the humidity, it's probably closer to 70s. Really not that bad at all. Pretty much good day for desert hiking. Now afternoon, it's gonna be a different story. So my goal is to get out there and be out of here around 12 or one. Any, for any later than that, it's probably gonna to be too hot out here. Got extra water, but uh, I certainly don't wanna run out. Now it's springtime in the desert, so there's a better chance to see critters out here than previously. You can see some of the blooms have already started, and uh, it really looks nice, even though it doesn't rain out here in the desert. Uh, snakes are out. I did see one last weekend, so hopefully we'll avoid snakes, especially poisonous ones. We don't have snake gators, but these uh, Solomon boots offer a degree of protection, even though it's not 100%, but if we could avoid snakes altogether, that'd be perfect. We're probably a quarter mile from the truck, maybe a little bit less. Very uneven terrain, so it's a little bit of a challenge to walk on. Where we need to go is that mountain range out there. Just beyond the edge of that mountain right over there is a valley, and in that valley could be the M cave. Now it's a fairly easy and flat hike, even though the terrain's uneven, so it's not that big of a deal right now. But we may get to some hills later on. And I know we're gonna be climbing over some rocks as well. Now, when I come out here, these hikes are very much unscripted. You are seeing things as they happen. There's no special effects, nothing is staged. This is real as it happens. Uh, so you're gonna be here seeing what I'm seeing. The desert uh, isn't really flat. You see a lot of like uh, draws like this that you've gotta kinda of come down and then back up the other side. It's not a big deal, but it can be draining if there's a lot of heat out here coming up these hills and whatnot. Now, I wanted to speak for just a minute about the phantom footsteps that other folks have, have talked about in some of these videos. In the Kenny Beach Mine video, Scott Nuttall heard footsteps at the campground. It's kind of a, an old, ancient, small camping area near the Kenny Beach Mine. He stopped the video for a moment because he said he heard footsteps but nothing was there. Sure, walked out to that same area, and when he got back to his truck and was driving back, he said there were things walking beside him the whole way. He chalked it up to bighorn sheep, but I'll tell you what, bighorn sheep don't follow you. They avoid you like the plague, so whatever he heard was not bighorn sheep. He said he'd walk a little bit, then stop, and the footsteps would take a few more steps and then stop, so it's almost like somebody was following him. Really, really strange. I myself heard some strange footsteps out there. I was walking along just like this, and I thought I heard a second set of footsteps running behind me really quick. So I turned around, because it was enough to startle me, but there was nothing there. So the three people in the same general area heard these phantom footsteps, and it's pretty much right on the other side of this mountain range where that whole valley is, where the Kenny Beach mine is located. I don't expect to really hear anything out here, but you never know. Um, Now the Desert National Wildlife Refuge is quite a ways from Area 51, Nellis Air Force Base, and uh, the National Test Range where they used to explode nuclear bombs, but it is adjacent to all those areas. It's a protected wildlife preserve, so I don't really expect any strange military activity out here, but in, in, you know, in our world, who knows? Who knows what you may run into? So as far as Kenny Beach goes, what happened to him is anybody's guess. Suicide, state disappearance are the most logical explanations. But uh, there's also the fringe explanation. Did something grab him? Did he hurt himself and die out here? Did he encounter something supernatural or something 
unusual. I don't know. Nobody knows. And that's part of the mystery. And that's why you're watching today. Because when I'm out here hiking, I'm trying to survive. So when you're watching the video, hopefully you may see something that I missed. And I can always come out here and check it out if you do. So that's why I appreciate your views, your comments. I love the comments. Please keep the comments coming. Good, bad, it doesn't matter. I want to hear your comments. I want to hear what you have to say. I love when you look at my videos and analyze them and come up with things that I missed. Several folks have looked at my videos and found strange caves or features and I've mapped them out and I'll be checking out a lot of these on future hikes. So please keep watching the videos carefully. Keep the comments coming. I love it. If you like what you see, subscribe and you'll be notified when I release new videos. My goal is to release as many as possible, but uh, I do have a day job. So time permitting, I come out here and film these videos which a lot of times may turn out to be nothing or we may get lucky and actually see something. I may not see anything and you may see something. So keep your eyes open because you never know what may happen out in the desert. It is not a barren and desolate place as a lot of people may think. There's a lot of life, a lot of activities, and a lot of strange things have been well documented in the desert outside of Las Vegas. Kind of hard, kind of hard to tell, but um, this is the valley where this M cave is supposed to be. May or may not be here. These are the steps that Kenny Beach took. Kenny was a hiker and claimed a hike up to 45 miles a day, camp out here. And while it's certainly possible, I could tell you right now, hiking a mile or so will wear you out, especially in the desert heat, wearing full gear. So did he hike 45 miles through this rough terrain? I would say that's a stretch because it is difficult. I'm fairly in shape. I've got plenty of gear, but uh, some of this terrain, uphill, rough terrain, really is not easy to hike. Maybe if you're going down a flat dirt road, you could do it, but I would say it's really a stretch to do 45 miles of this in one day. Yucca fruit. Interesting. Starting on a slight incline. The ground is fairly flat right now, but this slight uphill incline uh, makes it a little more, more difficult to walk on. The desert is as beautiful as it looks on video in person. Now I'm not like Kenny and just drink water sparingly. It's starting to get a little bit warm out here, so I'm gonna drink water when I get thirsty. Dehydration is something I'm going to try to avoid. We should have more than enough water for a quick hike out here and back. So I'm not going to really take any risks or do anything excessive or extreme. What we need to do is get right up in that valley up there at the base of that big uh, tall mountain and see if there's anything that looks like an M cave. So I'll be counting on you also to see if there's anything that I missed. Now one of the guys on YouTube found an M cave what looked like a cave that had been filled in. So I looked at the video and honestly, I really think that's a natural formation. I don't think it's been filled in. I don't think somebody would come out here and fill it in. And honestly, if they did, what do they use? Concrete, rocks? How are they gonna move big rocks way out here in the middle of the desert where you can't bring vehicles? I personally don't think that's a cave that was filled in, I don't. I think it's a natural formation that's unusual but I don't think it's an M cave that was filled in. And if it was, or just, there's other ways of filling it in. There's bat grates, there's concrete, there's foam, there's other technologies to fill it in. That looked like just some unusual rocks is all it was. I don't know where that is. I'd be more than happy to check it out, but I don't know the exact location. So uh, put the location of it in the comments and I'll see if I can plan a trip to check it out. But for today, we're coming up here to find where the M cave may be. Any clues of where an M cave may have been? and uh, anything else unusual out here because this is one of the valleys that Kenny Beach was supposed to have hiked up into. Now looking down, I don't see any people footprints. I do see some animal footprints, more than likely bighorn sheep, but I don't really see any people footprints. And the footprints that are here really don't look recent. Yeah, you can see a hoof right there. So there's been some sheep out here and that's about it. Maybe donkeys or horses, I've never seen those out here. They're more in the Cold Creek area. But the bighorn sheep tend to avoid you, so I'm not even expecting to see any of them out here. As we get closer into this valley, 
I'm going to look along these rocks because the M Cape Kenny described was about uh, uh, ground level and something he could walk into, I guess, about his height. So this is a prime area where it could be. But I'm not seeing anything. You see little pocket cavities here and there, but nothing big enough for a person to get into. Now, I'm not checking everything extremely detailed, so it's possible there may be some bushes growing up over an entrance. But I'm going to look my best carefully and see if I can see anything unusual. So if you're watching the video and you see something strange, please mention in the comments. I can come out here again and check it out. Now we've got the main valley we're walking up, but there's also a lot of these little side canyons too. I'm not going to check them out. Some of them are really rugged and we just don't have the time to check everywhere. So yeah, it is possible the MK is in a little side can canyon. Kenyon didn't mention anything about that, but I mean, you never know. Based on my recent information I've gotten online to do research, that canyon is where the M cave could possibly be. So we're going to head in there and check much more detail than we were before. Now look at this first rock formation here. It looks like the perfect place for it to put a cave, but it's not one here. Now look carefully. Do you see the shape of an M? I do. But this is natural formation. It hasn't been filled in. But I, you can see an M right here. It's just not a cave. Honestly, this right here is where I would expect the M cave to be. It's not where I have it mapped, but I would expect it to be right in this general area. At ground level, I just don't see anything. I always want to check these small pocket caves because some of these open up into big cavities. Not always. No M cave down here, but there are some pocket caves up there. But that's not consistent with Kenny's description. But right in this general area, somewhere out here, is where the M cave is supposed to be. So the last time I was here, I climbed up on top of the rocks, didn't see anything, and turned back. Because that's what I had on the map. But I've done some more research, and I think I had to go further back into this canyon. So we're going to go over these rocks, further back in the canyon, and see if we could find anything that looks like an M cave. In the meantime, you could see these little pocket caves that are just cavities and crevices in the hill. They really don't go anywhere. And like I said, honestly, I would expect the M cave to be right here on the side of the hill somewhere. But it's just not. I'm going to try not to lose my balance as I hike over these rocks. It's not a huge deal, and I've certainly uh, climbed over worse. But as you can see, our easy hike is no more. There's some pretty heavy stuff i got to get over. You've got to watch your step out here. There's snakes. You could fall, you could twist an ankle. You've just got to be really careful when you're traversing this rough terrain. Believe me, I've got my eyes peeled for anything that looks like it might be a cave worth checking out. It's not an MK, but it's an interesting little cavity. like we're climbing from here. Yeah, I think I could probably make it. All right.
That wasn't so bad. Based on the mark that I have with the GPS, the M cave should be in this area. The updated mark that I have, the M cave is right up there somewhere. So what we're gonna do is traverse through this rocky valley and see if we can get to the M cave up there. This should be the steps that Kenny Beach came through. So is, he's, is he out here? Is his body out here? I don't know. He could have fallen under a rock or something. Who knows? I doubt it, but anything's possible. So this uh, canyon we're going up is extremely rugged. Kenny would hike this stuff by himself, just like I am right here today. And he'd have a minimal amount of gear. And he was a long distance hiker. He loved the desert. And I love the desert too. I love coming out here. I love showing everybody the desert and how beautiful it is out here. The weather right here is perfect. It's a little bit of shade in this valley. It's not really too hot. There's a cool breeze. Clothing is comfortable, plenty of water. So yeah, right now we're doing fine. But uh, if we're out here hiking all day, come about uh, 3 p.m., it'd be a completely different story. But I'm hoping to be out of here before then. So right up this valley is where we're gonna go, probably way around that bend up there and see if we could see anything. Because if the M cave is out here in this valley, it'll be right around here somewhere. Now, it's entirely possible I can miss something, so this is where you want to keep your eyes peeled. For example, look up there. That little pocket cave is in the shape of an M. However, it would be a royal pain to climb all the way up there for what may be nothing more than just a cavity in the rock. Even though it looks like it goes in a ways, I'm not going to climb all the way up there. And I don't think Kenny did either, so I don't think that's the M cave he spoke of. I think the M cave, if it does exist, is probably closer to ground level somewhere. So the only question is where and if we're even in the right place. So we're going to press on, head into that valley and see what we can find. Keep your eyes peeled and see if you see anything that I missed. Put it in the comments if you do. And I can always plan another expedition out here. It's not that difficult to get out here. It's about a mile and a half hike. Now looking down there, you can see some rocks that have been stacked, a rock cairn. Um, people usually stack those as a marker. Uh, marker for what? Your guess is as good as mine, but clearly rocks don't stack themselves. So it's first stack of rocks we've seen um, as a marker, and uh, we'll see what else we can find in this valley. Now there's some animal droppings, coyote I'm assuming, not very big, but it's not small either. Coming over these rocks, you could see maybe some hoof print in the sand, bighorn sheep. Now what we got to do is um, keep on pressing on. We just changed the batteries in the GoPro and uh, head up into that valley, see if there's anything that looks like an M cave. So keep your eyes peeled and uh, I'll be looking too. Checking the GPS, and I don't know if you could see it, but uh, both points I have for possible M caves are back this direction somewhere. And I didn't see anything when we were down there, and I'm sure you didn't either, but if you do, please mention so in the comments. But as far as something ground level, what Kenny described, I just didn't see it out there. Now there are some caves up in the hills, but most of them don't look like they go in very far. And you could see um, we're standing like right directly where the cave should be but further up from them so i don't think they're out there and i don't think these points are correct but who knows we're going to keep on going and go further up into this valley and see what we can find up there because supposedly there's an m marked rock or something at the top of the hill which i don't know if we're going to go all the way up there but we'll go as far as we can and uh, see if there's anything unusual either way this is this is the area that kenny beach hiked in so it's your guess as good as mine if we run into anything unusual. Keep your eyes peeled, and uh, if I see anything, I'll try my best to capture it on film. It's kind of a weird little pocket there. I think I'm going to hike up and check it out, even though there's probably going to be nothing.
This is a good example of one of these little pocket caves. They go in a few feet, but they really don't go anywhere. So you can see if we go inside, it's not even really a cave. But from a distance, it looks like one. Now you can see down there, it looks like, um, strange, you're gonna hear my echo, my voice echoing out there on the rocks. It looks like an unnatural area that could have been filled in. Uh, but I don't think anybody did. I really think that's a natural formation. Is it possible there's an M cave there? Somebody filled it in? Sure. But it doesn't look like that. I really think that's a natural formation. It just looks like somebody may have filled it in and covered up a cave. But uh, I'll tell you what, that would be an ideal place for an M cave if it did exist out here. Some of the other YouTubers spoke of a M cave that was actually covered up or filled in. And if you look right here, it certainly does look like something's been filled in here. And if you look at these triangular shaped rocks, um, two triangular shaped rocks, I mean, yeah, this is the place where an M cave could be. Did somebody fill it in? Well, I'll tell you what, let's get up close to this formation and see if it's natural. You can see some of the materials falling off. That's a rock. That's a rock. I don't think somebody somebody filled in anything here. It's unusual, but it certainly looks natural. Let's press on and keep heading up this valley. And it's going to be rough going, but we'll see what we can find up there. If only Kenny had better describe where the cave was. He says he forgot, but uh, you would think he would have remembered some land features or something. Yeah. If I can get to that vantage point up there, I might try that and see if I could see anything up there. Now, this is a challenging part of the hike because... There's a lot of loose rocks, and it's extremely steep, you can see. So it's a little dangerous because I don't want to go sliding down. I don't want some eerie calm about this place. Oh, shit! See how easy it is to lose your balance? I was stepping on what I thought was a solid rock. But clearly it wasn't so solid. Ugh. We can get right up there, I think we can get a better view. Just gotta be careful, take it one step at a time. Yeah, we'll get up there and pull up the binoculars, see what we can find. Taking my time and slowly watching where I can put my foot so that I don't take a wrong step and start sliding down there because it's a long ways down. Some of these rocks look sturdy, but they're really not. I 
It almost looks like the people have been here, like footprints or something, but I just don't see people coming up here. It's very, very remote. Yeah, we should be able to get a good viewpoint of this whole valley up here. See if we can get up on these rocks. All right, this is a dangerous part. I'm not gonna take a chance on this stuff. I could probably make it up, but I'm not gonna take unnecessary risks by myself out here. Come around the other side, see if we can get a better view over there. It's not really a sure cliff, but you can still see it will be a long way down if we lose our balance and start sliding. So this is what I'm gonna to try to avoid. And just carefully watch my step, watch where we're walking. Um, yeah, cause there's, that's, would be an unforgivable fall. There's so many rocks down there. Come up between these two rock formations and see what we can see. And that's where we came up. There are some strange smells in this area, which is what I'm assuming it's sage or some kind of a wild herb. And in the springtime, you see a lot more growth than you do in the uh, summer or winter. So it's probably some of the blooming flowers out here. You could see it'd be a long ways down, so we'll have to be careful coming down. Straight up rock climbing. Now, take a look at this rock. If we lose our balance, we would get hurt. So we're gonna be real careful. I'm not much gonna go much further than this ledge right up here. Yeah, that's about it. I probably shouldn't even come up here, but while well, we're here. So looking around, I'm gonna take a quick break here, pull out the binoculars, see if I could see anything interesting. Um, if we were to hike up these hills, I could tell you right now, it would not be easy. That is uh, very steep. There's loose rocks, uh, very easy to fall. And it is, uh, it is really physically demanding to go up there, so um, we're not going to risk it. I don't see anything on camera in these hills, it looks unusual, but like I said, I'm going to take a quick break, pull out the binoculars, and see if there's anything unusual worth hiking to, but uh, yeah, it's a long way down, so we're going to have to be real careful as we come down this. All 
All right, we're going to carefully come down this rock. I do not want to fall today. I don't want to fall any day, but today we're trying to be very careful, watching where we're putting our foot. Trying to have at least three points of contact at all time on these rocks. Stepping carefully so we don't slip. It's uh, not as easy as it looks. And of course, if I was not holding a GoPro, I could be using both hands, but that's fine. We'll make it. In there. That's that. This, I believe, is our turnaround point. We've come up here and uh, the M cave was supposed to be out here somewhere. I'm just not seeing it. Now up towards the top of the mountain here, there are some small pocket caves that look like they might go in. But as you could see, that would be a hellacious height going up there and I'm not going to uh, hike up there unless I know for sure there's something worth seeing. It's also interesting to note on the other side of this mountain range hill right here that you're looking at is the valley that the Kenny Beach mine is in. That's the valley where, we, where myself and two other YouTubers heard phantom footsteps. Something about that valley is strange, so we may be doing a video going into that valley again sometime, investigating these phantom footsteps. So look for that on my YouTube channel at a um, later date. Looking around, we had the binoculars out. I didn't see any M cave. I didn't see anything interesting. I didn't see a filled in M cave. Um, what is notable here is if you look on this hillside, look at all that loose, loose rock right there. This loose rock is usually what you see at the base of a mine because this is the mine tailings or whatever people have dug out of the mine. However, there is nothing up there. I don't see any cave or mine or anything. So if there was a cave out here, anything worth, uh, seeing i'm just not seeing in this valley that's not to say the mk doesn't exist but i'm just not seeing in this valley now i will say that i do have several leads for the mk in picture canyon so we may be doing a hike out to picture canyon next now picture canyon there is some interesting um land formation there's supposed to be some petroglyphs and i have marked on a gps map two or three locations where there may be an m cave so look for a video us hiking into Picture Canyon sometime in the near future as well. Um, what we're going to do right now is try to get back down where we came from, carefully come out here over the rocks, and head back to the truck. So we'll film on the way out and see if you could see anything. But uh, yeah, so far I just didn't see the M cave out here despite it being marked on the map. And several folks mentioning that this is the location for it. It's clearly not. Or it is, it's just hard to find or hard to see. I'm going to go check this out just because it looks like it's a cave that could be dug out. I don't think so, but uh, I'm going to go take a look. We're here. I see all this uh, loose rock here and that little hole. Looks like something dug it out. But it's nothing. So we'll go on back down here. watch our step here so we don't uh, slip and fall you can see it's a long ways down I 
trying to get up here, maybe diagonally over there. So it's a lot less stable than I thought. Okay. That is not a good footing. If we can get over there, I think we'll be okay. This is a new step. This is going to be hands and knees kind of stuff. See how loose it is? Just trying to focus on what I'm doing so we don't slip. We're almost down to the bottom. I mean, we're not there till we're there. There, it wasn't so hard, was it? Seriously, don't come out here by yourself like I am. It's uh, potentially very dangerous. It doesn't look like that big of a deal, but uh, one wrong slip and you can get seriously hurt out here. All right, let's press on. Some of these rocks are just like going down a set of stairs, not that big a deal. Others are more challenging. Kenny Beach was an avid hiker and he came out here all the time. So he he knew what he was doing. And if he really was hiking 45 miles of this terrain, he was an expert. And uh, for something to happen, a person like that to disappear is unusual because people like that usually know what they're doing. You know, they're experienced. Uh, but that's not to say anything could have happened. Something natural, or, you know, an injury, a wild animal, perhaps. I'd like to think that it found the body, but I mean, look around. This is a vast place. How far do you think rescuers are going to come? And if his body was lost out here and later eaten by animals, mountain lions or something, or vultures, it's hard to say. You may find a set of bones out here. I mean, hikers have been found like that before. So yeah, it's possible. Kenny Veach died out here and he's still out here somewhere. He's possibly staged his own disappearance and he's alive and well someplace, maybe living it up on a beach in Australia. Who knows? Let's face it, life sucks sometimes and who wouldn't want to just disappear and leave all your problems behind? And then there's the fringe theories that something supernatural or related to the US government may have happened to him, which, you know, is always a possibility. 
not saying I don't believe in the supernatural, but I am going to say that uh, there's almost always an explanation for something that uh, you see that's strange. It's, it's very rare that something happened with no logical explanation. Now, I have seen things in my life that did defy logic and seem to not have an explanation. I'm not going to go into detail on this video, but let's just say that I've seen things that I would consider potentially supernatural because there just simply is no logical explanation. UFOs, well documented by the US government. We've all seen videos. They're there. But that doesn't mean they're from space or of the dimension. It just means they're not identified. I personally have seen a UFO. Yes, I have. It was out towards Boulder City and uh, it was an oval object just ho hovering over the mountains. So it uh, didn't fit the description of any aircraft or balloon I've ever seen. It was just kind of sitting there. So hard to say what it was. But I will say there is uh, a lot of new technology that is used by the U.S. government in these mountains. Because Area 51 is pretty much 45 minutes as the crow flies that way. So it's entirely feasible that there would be some sort of new technology flying around out here. Difficult to say. But as far as that having to do with Kenny Beach disappearance, I doubt it, but you never know. I mean, literally anything, anything could happen to the man. Look at, look at the terrain here. If you were to fall and hurt yourself and, or get wedged under a crevice or explore a cave or a mine and there's a cave in, they'll never find you. So maybe that is what happened. It's hard to say. Kenny would push himself. He would go without food or water as long as he could, which really isn't a smart thing to do out here. You should always uh, drink when you're thirsty, eat when you're hungry, and don't push your body because your body is a machine, and like any machine, if you push too hard, it'll break. You've just got to be careful and watch yourself. Now myself, I try not to take unnecessary chances and risks. Yeah, I know coming out here is taking a chance and they say why don't you come out with others well it's difficult there's not a whole lot of other folks i know that are willing to or physically able to go over some of this rough stuff and uh i can cover a lot more ground by myself and as long as you're careful you usually find like this you just got to be really careful but understand that every time you come out here you're taking a chance It's a lot easier on the way out than it was the way in. It's a slight downslope. Flat areas like this is a piece of cake. Um, even the rocks isn't too difficult because it's all kind of downhill, so you got gravity working for you there. We're gonna keep looking on the way out and see if there's anything that looks like it might be an M cave, but so far I haven't seen anything in this canyon. It doesn't mean the M cave doesn't exist, it just means it's not here. So I've got some comments from folks saying that this is just a hike. These are just a hike. And it is just a hike. But like I said before, it's probably 85 degrees out there. We're in the middle of the desert. A good mile and a half from where we parked from the nearest road. A good 20 minutes from the nearest store. And maybe, you know, 30 minutes from the Las Vegas Strip. So we are quite a ways out here. And when you're sitting watching this on a video... It doesn't look like any big deal, but when you're out here, these are these are real risks that you're taking. It's real danger. And we're doing this to try to retrace Kenny Beach's steps. Not necessarily to find him, but to see if his stories are feasible. If it even is possible. Kenny Beach said he would hike up to 45 miles in a day. Over this stuff, I would probably dispute that. Because we've been maybe half a mile, if that, through this rough stuff. And it is it is really, really demanding. It is it's brutal in this desert heat. You've got to be in top physical condition. Um, you're gonna be hungrier, you're gonna be thirstier, uh, because your body is being exerted more, and it is a extreme hike. I'd love to climb up and see some of these small pocket caves, and I'm sure Kenny would as well. But the thing is, that is actually a tougher climb than it looks. And some of these caves don't go in more than a few feet, even though they look like they do. So it may not even be worth going up to some of them. 
but that one does look like it might go in. I don't want to, don't want to go up there and see that it doesn't go anywhere though, because this is a little bit more challenging hike than it looks. But we may try it. You can see a small bird right there singing. Is he singing happily? Is he calling for a mate? Or is he warning me for something that I don't see yet? Well, that cave could be shaped like an M. We'll try to get closer and see if we can uh, get a better look at it. I'm a firm believer that anything worth seeing out here in the Nevada desert would not be easy to get to. So that cave up there, if that is the M cave, certainly is not easy to get to. It's been a pain getting this far, but we're gonna try to get up there. I mean, we're this close. And it looks like it could be in the shape of an M and it looks like it goes in a little bit. So screw it, I'm gonna try to see what's in there. All right, I'm just gonna get up here without slipping. It's like walking up a hill of marbles. Loose rocks at every step. It almost looks like there's somebody else's footprints here, but it's kind of hard to tell for sure. It's still somewhat early in the morning and it's not blistering hot, so yeah, that cave does look like it goes in a little bit. So we're gonna try to get up there and see it. Because this is in the area where the M cave is supposed to be. Way there I think we can make it and it looks like it goes in so how far is anybody's guess but you can see how difficult it is climbing up this hill we don't want to put our hands in this freaking cactus so I'm scanning the train and looking for the best way to go and hopefully I just I choose wisely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a cave. This is gonna be a little challenging, more rock climbing. Almost there. Doesn't look like it goes in very far, and I didn't think it would. But I'll tell you what, why we hiked out here to see. Sure is in the shape of an M though, isn't it? Is this the M cave Kenny spoke of? My body's not vibrating. But that was a challenging hike. 
to get up here. So if Kenny was dehydrated, I could see him, his body vibrating. It's going a little bit. I am fully inside this cave. My body's not vibrating. So it's really difficult to say if this is actually the M cave. It's kind of in the shape of an M. It's not really what Kenny described, but uh, it's hard to say. But I'm in here, I don't feel anything strange. But that's not to say that there wasn't something in here strange when Kenny hiked up here. And like I said, that was a challenging hike. And um, I didn't see this cave coming in. I didn't see this cave the first time I came through here. These caves are hard to see because many of them don't even go in this far. This one goes in about, uh, I don't know, six, six to eight feet. And it would be a nice place to seek shelter at nighttime. You could see uh, the walls of the cave here. But I'm not seeing anything unusual about it. I mean, it's just a cave so far. In this little area here, there's nothing in there. So yeah, it's uh, it's hard to say. This could be the M cave Kenny spoke of. He could have came up this hill. He could have been dehydrated and um, just had a big head rush when he got up here and his whole body started vibrating because he wasn't drinking water. It could have been in the hot sun. I mean, I'm dehydrated. I had a good breakfast, a good night's sleep. Kenny, he may have slept out here the night before and not slept very well, not ate very well. It's hard to say, but uh, you know, your body can sometimes do strange things and uh, you do a difficult hike coming up this hill like we just did and you're dehydrated. Yeah, you may get a little lightheaded coming up here. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe he exaggerated about the vibrations. But uh, this is the second time I've been out here and I didn't see this cave the first time, so it's easy to miss. And uh, it's your guess as to whether or not this is the real M cave. It is a cave. It is in the location the M cave is supposed to be. Um, Nothing strange about it, though, but like I said, it's, uh, you know, when Kenny was out here, if it was something supernatural, maybe something was hiding in this cave. Maybe it was, uh, I don't know. I'll let you be the judge. Is this the cave? I don't know. I'm not going to stop looking, though. Still plenty to see out here in Desert National Wildlife Refuge. And until Kenny Beach is found and tells his story, people will keep coming out here, exploring looking for answers to see if there's any clue as to what happened to him and if his story is even feasible. Well, this is cool. This is interesting. It would be a great place for a break, but uh, I got 10 minutes to 11. So I'm going to start the trek down and then we're going to head out of here. And um, I'm glad we found at least a cave, whether or not it's the M cave. Like I said, I'll let you be the judge of that, but I'm going to head out of here and hopefully be home by noon before it gets too hot. Is that a perfect letter M? It's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. Is this the M cave? Hard to say. Now you can see how dangerous and difficult it is getting up this hill. So we're just going to take our time, be careful, and hopefully get back down. Because once we get back down, for the most part, it's pretty much a downhill the whole way back more or less but once we get into this valley down here it should be a lot easier but i do think it was uh, a good idea that we went up at least check out that cave it could be the m cave i don't know no m cave or not kenny disappeared seven and a half years ago so if that was the m cave whatever that was in there that caused his body to vibrate if that is what happened i wouldn't expect it to still be there unless it's some like weird crystal or something part of a mystery like this that may never get solved all right winds are picking up a little bit and that's fine but we've got to navigate this loose rock without slipping and losing our balance otherwise we'll be sliding the entire way down it does kind of look like an M doesn't it to be honest I wasn't planning I didn't I didn't think we'd even find a cave out here but there was nothing unusual about that one at least not this time maybe there was seven and a half years ago when Kenny disappeared But it's always good to come out here and retrace the steps, see if his story is feasible, and uh, see if there's any clues that remain. I 
because after all, dinosaurs roamed the earth millions of years ago and scientists have still found clues, not only as to their existence, but what killed them off. So you never know until you're actually out here what you'll find. You can check Google Earth and Google Earth is a fantastic resource. You can analyze other people's videos and sometimes pick up a lot of information. But until you actually come out here and see firsthand, it's really difficult to get a feel of how things are out here and uh, what could have happened. So I think the rough part of the hike is, well, I'm not gonna say it's behind us, but it's probably behind us. We just need to get down some of these rocks into the main valley down there and we should be okay. Uh, I'm not gonna go that way. I'm gonna try to find something easier. Yeah, this will do. All right, so that's where we just were up there. Uh, you can't even see that little pocket cave we were just in. Don't know for sure if that's the M cave. And honestly, this area right here is where I would have expected it to be. A ground level cave in the shape of an M. But of course, the solution to a mystery is never solved, never uh, served you on a platter. You've got to go out and hunt for it. And clearly there's no cave here. But it looks like this is where one would, you'd expect to find one. This is where I thought one would be, but it's not. So that cave we're just in, is that the real M cave? I don't know. No way to know for sure. So from here on out, it shouldn't be that difficult to get to get back out of here. Um, just making sure there's not a cave hidden behind here. It doesn't look like there is. It shouldn't be that difficult to get out of here. It's, uh, it's an open wash, it's all downhill, then we'll hike through the open desert to get back to the truck. So it's, uh, it's about 11, 15 a.m. It's getting a little bit warmer, but with this breeze, it's very, very manageable. To find anything notable, you've really got to get up into these mountains, and it's not always easy, as you can see. Several times we almost slipped. There were steep cliffs, sharp rocks, anything could have happened. Heck, even this, this wash we're walking through right now on a downhill slope is easy, but the danger is everywhere. There could be snakes, twisted ankles, who knows what. We don't keep drinking water, there could be dehydration. The desert is a beautiful place, but it's a dangerous place. So when you come out here, you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to be prepared, and you've got to take every possible precaution, which is why we're heading back. Now there is a bone of some sort. Animal probably, sheep, or it could be Kenny but I doubt it. Looks like possibly deer. Narrow, skinny leg. Difficult to say. And that's it. Doing it by my watch. We've come almost four miles. That's round trip. Way out there is where we were. And you could see that's the only way to get there, a round trip, four mile hike. Now way off in the distance, you could see the truck, I could see it. So I know we're close. A couple more valleys and draws like this will be there, it's about a quarter mile away, give or take some. I don't wanna under, understate the difficulty of this hike and the seriousness of coming out here. So if you think it's just a hike, if you think it's easy, walk in the desert, I can assure you it's not. I'm sweating profusely. I drank a lot of water. I'm hungry. Um, I'm really not that tired, but I'm just worried about the heat and the sun and dehydration. And this is four miles. I don't see how in the world Kenny Beach could hike 45 miles in one day, unless he did it at night through this stuff, but that would be even more difficult because you can't see where you're going. So yeah, I mean, he can come out here and hike. 10, 20 miles a day, maybe. It's not gonna be easy. But if you do decide to come out here, I'll tell you what, you gotta be in shape, top physical condition. You've gotta be well prepared, plenty of water, rested, not dehydrated, because this place is no joke and it's unforgiving. And if you wanna just uh, lay down and die out here, the desert will certainly let you. 
and will be very unsympathetic to your needs. So with that being said, so with that being said, we're almost to the truck as you can see out there. And uh, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, go ahead and subscribe and you'll be notified when I post new videos. My goal is to try to post one video a month. If I can do more, do more, I will. But that's my goal. I've got a couple more ideas for videos out here. Like I said, there's a, a picture canyon hike I would like to do. There's a couple uh, leads on the M cave if that wasn't what we found today. A um, few more points of interest out here. And of course, right over this hill is a valley where the Kenny Beach mine is. And in that valley, myself and two other YouTubers reported strange phantom footsteps. And I certainly didn't hear it out here today, but in that valley over there, it sounded like a second set of footsteps. So I would like to do another video out there, probably at night, with one or more other folks going out there with flashlights and just see if we can record anything, see what happens. These hikes are always a crapshoot. You never know what you're going to see out here. Sometimes you're, you know, you find something interesting. Sometimes you don't. And I, to be honest, I didn't think we'd find the cave. We found a cave. But it's up to you to decide if that's the M cave or not. So thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like what you see. And please comment. I love your comments. Keep them coming, good or bad. It doesn't matter. Keep commenting. And uh, I try to respond to every comment that I see. So that's it for today. Enjoy, and uh, we'll see you in the next adventure.